Our story starts in Chicago, 1890. Our actors, Dr. and Mrs. Meyer and a young Norwegian, Ludwig Brandt. The doctor and Ludwig are talking in the former's living room. Insurance is a fine thing, Ludwig. Yes, I know, Doctor. But it's no fun trying to sell it. You can't make any money at it. I'll bet I could make money with insurance. Selling it? Oh, collecting it. What are you talking about, Doctor? I have a scheme where I could get rich cheating the insurance companies and never get caught. A lot of people who are in jail right now have said that. Wait till you hear this. Suppose you were insured for, say, $10,000, and you were married and then you died. What would happen? My wife would collect my 10000 insurance. Correct. Now suppose you didn't really die, but someone convinced the insurance company that you did. Then what would happen? My wife would still collect. We'll take you, for example. First, we marry you off to somebody whom we can handle. Then I gradually make you sick. During the last part of your illness, we call in some outside doctor. Then, when you get real sick, I go to the morgue and get a cadaver and put him in your place. But what becomes of me? I hide you somewhere else. And in 24 hours, I cure you of your supposed illness. Then your wife collects the insurance, and we all share in it. It sounds easy enough, but would it work? Why not? Well, in the first place, I'm not married. Oh, that wouldn't be any trouble. I could have you married in a few hours. To whom? Marie. Your, your own wife? Why, well, that would be bigamy. No one would know it but we three. It still sounds awful risky. How would you make me sick? By feeding you small doses of antimony. Oh, but that's poison. It might kill me. Scientifically administered, it would only make you very sick. But supposing you gave me too much? Nonsense. You have faith in me, haven't you? Yes. But accidents do happen. Not with me, they don't. Now, what else is there to worry about? I, I don't know. It, it might be easier than selling insurance it, at that. It would be easier. If we pulled this off in about five months, you'd get $3,000 for your share. Well, do you want to try it? Well, I, I don't know. I, I'd like to think it over. What is there to think about? Well, a lot of things. If I was sure it was safe, I... It's absolutely foolproof, my friend. Well, what can I lose? That's the way to talk. Now, Marie have all, and I have already talked it over, and she's willing. Well, when do we start on this business? The sooner we start, the less time we have to wait to collect. Well, let's do it right away, then. All right. You two can be married today. Tomorrow we take out the insurance, and then we all go to New York. And in a few months, we fool the insurance companies. And so it was. Ludwig and Marie were married. And Ludwig took out insurance in her favor for $10,000. After that, they moved to New York. Now, several months pass, and it's time for Ludwig to start on his poison diet. Haven't you seen enough of New York in the past four months? None of us has worked a day or earned a penny since we've been here. You must start taking the antimony. My money's running out. How sick will it make me? Well, at first you'll hardly notice it. In a month or a week, you'll start getting bad. And in two weeks, you'll be awfully sick. And I'll keep you that way for three days. And after that? Then I go to the morgue and get a body. And you hide somewhere till after we get the body buried and collect the insurance money. Well, I'm afraid. This is a fine time to tell me that. After I've made all these preparations and spent all the money. Well, why don't you get someone who's already sick? How can I? The insurance is in your name. Well, Ludwig, here's the first dish. A custard pudding. Well, what's that stuff sprinkled on top? The antimony. Uh, how do I know it won't kill me? I know my business. Come, Ludwig, eat the custard. Here you are strong and healthy when you should be sick in bed. It, it doesn't look so good to me. You're not going to back off now, are you? After we spent all this money coming to New York, paying the insurance premiums and buying furniture for this apartment. If you think it's so nice, why don't you eat it? Oh, you ungrateful weakling. After all we've done for you and the promises you made and... It's no use, Marie. Why argue with him? Let's pack up and go back to Chicago. You do nothing of the kind. He's made the bargain and he'll keep it. But, Mrs. Meyer, I... You do as you promised. Now eat that custard. It might kill me. Don't be a fool, Ludwig. Do you think we want to be taken up for murder? Nothing's going to happen to you. If you're sure of that, oh, I... Of course we're sure. Well, all right. Now you're being sensible. The sooner we get started on this business, the sooner we'll have it over with. And the sooner we'll get that insurance money. In three weeks, Ludwig Brandt was in a very serious condition, and an outside doctor was called in. The doctor diagnosed the ailment as gastric ulcers, prescribed some medicine, and left. We find Mrs. Mayer at Ludwig's bedside. 
How do you feel, Ludwig? Awful. I can't stand much more of this. Don't worry. It'll soon be over. Myers down at the morgue now looking for a corpse. How can he get one that way? Well, he goes in and says he's looking for his brother and then describes you. If there's a body there that looks like you, he'll claim it and bring it up here. I hope he finds one soon. That antimony is terrible stuff to take. You only have to stand it a little while longer, and then it'll all be over, and you collect $3,000. That $3,000 is all that kept me going. When I get it, I'm going back to Norway, and I'll never come to this country again. Oh, that must be my husband. I'll go downstairs and let him in. He's the most impatient man I ever saw. Oh, don't make so much noise, Henry. I'm coming. Can't you hear the doorbell? Why didn't you answer? I was upstairs with Ludwig. How is he? He's awful sick. Did you get a body? No. I've been to every morgue within 50 miles of New York, and there isn't one to be had. Well, what are we going to do? We can't keep on like this. I got some arsenic in Jersey City. I'll try that tonight. The druggist said it was the finest and purest obtainable. What are you going to do with it? Give it to Ludwig. Oh, won't it kill him? Yes. Oh, we can't do that, Henry. We have to. We're running out of money and the premiums on his policies are due in another week. But that's murder. Shh, not so loud. But it is. You'll go to the electric chair. Who's ever going to know it except you and me? And we can keep our mouths shut. Oh, I, I wish it could be different, Henry. Well, it can't. Here, take this arsenic. Fix him a bowl of soup and put in a pinch. And bring it upstairs. I'll be up there with Ludwig. Yes? It's I, Dr. Meyer. Come in, Doctor. Well, Ludwig, how are you? Oh, I wish it was over, Doctor. It'll soon be over, Ludwig. I'm going out to get the body tonight, and by morning you'll be feeling pretty good again. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. I never was so sick in all my life. It's Marie. I told her to bring you a bowl of soup. Come in, Marie. Would you like a little soup, Ludwig? No. I can't eat anything. I, my... Stomach. It'll strengthen you, my boy. Is there any antimony in it? No, there's no antimony. You don't have to take that anymore. But I don't want any soup. I... Oh, come, Ludwig. You must drink this. Expect to get your strength back. Well, all right. I'll drink it. Now you're using your head. Here. Oh, ooh, it's bitter. That's your imagination. You're sure there's no antimony in here? I told you there was no antimony. A and now I'm going to start getting well again? Yes, Ludwig. Soon you'll be as healthy as you ever were. You'll like that, won't you, Ludwig? Yes, Mrs. Meyer. I'm tired of being sick. Finish your soup, Ludwig. Yes, you'll need all your strength to throw off all that antimony. Everything will be all right, won't it, Doctor? Well, of course it will. So now stop worrying. I, I'm weak from being sick, and I, I get frightened, and I... Oh, 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 oh. What is it, Ludwig? My stomach. It hurts. Badly? Yeah, it's terrible. You put something in the soup. No, Ludwig, I didn't. Oh. Oh. How is it now? It's letting up a little. Just take it easy, Ludwig. Take it easy. No, I, I'm getting sleepy. Lift me up, Doctor. I... I think I'm going to sleep. Yes, Ludwig. The Myers collected $10,000 insurance, but an adjuster became suspicious and had the body exhumed. What the chemists found started a detective on the Myers trial. July 1893, and we come to the last day of Dr. Myers' first trial. One of the jury had recently been released from a state institution for the insane. He is listening intently while Dr. Myers' attorney sums up the case. Gentlemen of the jury... The prosecution has not proved that there was a murder. All that my honorable colleague, the district attorney, has been able to prove is a conspiracy to defraud. And I ask you, gentlemen, to bring in your verdict accordingly. I won't do it! I won't do it! Your Honor, Your Honor, I object to this unseemly conduct on the part of Juryman Lowe. I may be human, but I am sane. Yes, I'm sane, I tell you. I can see the cigar in Dr. O'Sullivan's left hand. I can recognize my son. What is the meaning of this, Your Honor? Silence. Juryman Alexander Lowe has evidently become mentally unbalanced and not fit to act in this case. I am therefore compelled to declare the case of the people of the state of New York versus Henry Meyer a mistrial. End of the second trial, May 18, 1894. Gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? 
We have, Your Honor. What is it? We find the prisoner guilty of murder in the second degree. Let the prisoner rise. Henry Meyer, the verdict of the jury was very illogical. They might very properly have convicted you of murder in the first degree, by which you would have been put to death. In sentencing you, my hands are tied. The verdict of the jury compels me to sentence you to imprisonment for life. Henry Meyer served 20 years in various prisons and asylums for the criminally insane. In 1914, he was admitted to parole. Mrs. Meyer was never tried, but died a few years after the imprisonment of her husband. 